Every college football coach going into every season faces a huge amount of pressure as their job is on the line every day, every season, no matter how big or small the game is. Some coaches may have pressure on them, such as being on the hot seat or coming off a disappointing season. While some may have some pressure on them after having a good year, but having even higher expectations for the coming season, and just a few, some of the top in the game, have pressures of trying to be a college football playoff team and trying to get a college football national title. No matter how good or bad a program is, there's always going to be a sense of pressure, no matter what, heading into the season, no matter how big or small it is. In today's video, I'm going to be talking about a number of college football coaches that may be facing a lot of pressure to succeed going into the 2023 college football season. Before I move on, remember to smash that like button and subscribe if you haven't already. Now let's get into it. The first coach I'm going to be talking about in today's video is West Virginia head coach Neil Brown. Neil Brown is going into this 2023 season, to put it simply, he is on the hot seat. This season is going to be very crucial to see what his future is as the Mountaineers head coach. And honestly, in 2022, you could argue that he was on the hot seat. He is going into year five at West Virginia, in which he has a coaching record of 22 and 25. He's only had one season above 500, which was in 2020, a shortened season in which they went 6-4 and four and won the Liberty Bowl. He's made it to two bowl games in his time at West Virginia, the last one being, being in 2021, in which they lost a guaranteed rate bowl, having a losing record of 6-7. and seven. This previous 2022 campaign at West Virginia, this team was just straight up not very good at all. And at one point, you may have thought that Neil Brown was going to get fired, and it definitely did look like that way, especially later on in the season. But after beating Oklahoma at home and Oklahoma State on the road, it really did save his job for at least one more season as West Virginia finished the year 5-7, and seven, missing a bowl game. In 2023, West Virginia will play Penn State, Duquesne, Pitt, Texas Tech, TCU, Houston, Oklahoma State, UCF, BYU, Oklahoma, Cincinnati, and Baylor. That is definitely not the easiest schedule for West Virginia, who on paper does not look like the best Big 12 team out there. And if Neil Brown's going to keep his job, he's probably going to have to, at minimum, have a 7-win season. Staying in the Big 12 for this next coach, I'm going to be talking about Oklahoma head coach Brent Venables. Brent Venables, who is a longtime successful defensive coordinator in college football at Oklahoma and Clemson these past couple decades, most recently Clemson. He was a first-year head coach for college football in 2022 at Oklahoma, and they had some high expectations heading into the year nationally. I'm not quite saying that everyone expected them to be a playoff team or even win the conference, but a lot of people expected at least a 9, 10, maybe 11 win season from the Sooners, and that's exactly what nobody got. The Sooners went 6-7. and seven. The offense wasn't bad, but the defense was one of the worst in college football on the FBS level, statistically speaking. Was last season a disappointment for Oklahoma? Yes. Is Brent Venables on the hot seat? No. It was only his first year. You can't necessarily be on the hot seat just after your first season. But going into 2023 for the season, he is going to be under a lot of pressure to show a lot of improvement not only in this team, but as a head coach as well. you got to see that improvement from 6-7, and seven, and I would say you want to aim for at least a 9-win season in 2023 to show them those notable improvements, especially right before you go to the SEC in 2024, which will be much harder than the Big 12. They are going to have, I would say, one of the easier schedules in the Big 12, a definitely a winnable one, but of course some of these games are going to be harder than others. Arkansas State, SMU, Tulsa, Cincinnati, Iowa State, Texas, UCF, Kansas, Oklahoma State, West Virginia, BYU, and TCU are all the teams they're going to be playing during the 2023 college football campaign. Personally, I think they're going to improve a lot from last season to 2023, but of course Oklahoma fans are going to want to see that improvement when it actually hits pen to paper. And it's definitely going to be a lot of pressure as you do not want to have a 7, 6, and some may argue an 8-win season right before you go to the SEC. 
Moving on to the next head coach, I'm going to be talking about Mizzou head coach Eli Drinkwitz. Drinkwitz is going into his fourth year as the head coach for the Tigers. In the past three seasons from 2020 to 2022, he has a coaching record of 17-9, making two bowl game appearances with a bowl game record of 0-2, and he's never had a winning season at Mizzou. I would say that Drinkwitz's seat at Mizzou is on the warmer side. I think this is going to have to be a put-up-or-shut-up season for him at Mizzou, as if he has a 6-6 six and six regular season or anything below, it's very likely this could be his last season as the head coach at Mizzou. When taking a look at the talent on Mizzou's roster heading into 2023, the young talent that they have coming back, some of the veteran leadership, some of the guys that got back in the portal, there is potential for this to be his best season yet at Mizzou, However, you got to ultimately see it happen. He's competed in games in the past with some big teams in the SEC, but he's also has lost games in some pretty bad fashions to teams they probably should have beaten. In 2023, Mizzou is going to play South Dakota, Middle Tennessee, Kansas State, Memphis, Vanderbilt, LSU, Kentucky, South Carolina, Georgia, Tennessee, Florida, and Arkansas. This is going to be a very pivotal year for the future of Mizzou's program with Drinkwitz. As, like I said, I believe if they're going to be 6-6 six and six or anything below, he may not be the head coach in 2024. Staying in the SEC for this next coach, I'm going to be talking about Florida head coach Billy Napier. Napier is not a first-year head coach. He has had his first season at Florida in 2022, in which they went 6-7. and seven. Before that, he was a head coach at Louisiana for a total of four years where he had a lot of success. Three of the four years, he had 10-plus winning seasons and finished with a coaching record of 40-12. and 12. But in this previous season at Florida, they went 6-7 and seven under him, and ultimately it was, I would say, a pretty disappointing year. They were a preseason top 25 team and made it all the way to number 16 in the AP poll, but ultimately most of the season they would be unranked and finished with a losing record. I think there's a quite a bit of pressure on Billy Napier heading into 2023 just to see some improvement in that Florida Gators team that did not look like the best team out there in 2022. They had some close losses. If they really do turn around some of those close losses, they're going to be a much better team. Of course, you can say that for a lot of people, but this does ring true for Florida football in 2023. In 2023, they're going to play Utah, McNeese, Tennessee, Charlotte, Kentucky, Vanderbilt, South Carolina, Georgia, Arkansas, LSU, Missouri, and Florida State. It's definitely a pretty tough schedule, but of course you can say that for most SEC teams. I think they're going to be an improved team on both sides of the ball, but ultimately I do feel like that quarterback position is going to be a big question mark. The last coach I'm going to be talking about in today's video is Miami head coach Mario Cristobal. Crystal Ball was a head coach at Oregon before his time at Miami from 2017 to 2021, which in that five-year time span, he had a record of 35-13 and with a bowl record of 2-2. Two and two. In this season with Miami in 2022, most recently, they went 5-7. and seven. They missed a bowl game completely and were arguably one of the most disappointing teams in college football. They were a preseason top 25 team and made it all the way to number 13 at the highest in the AP poll and ultimately had a really disappointing year. The defense wasn't that great, and the offense was pretty disappointing, especially when they returned a good quarterback from 2021 in Tyler Van Dyke. In 2023, Miami is going to be playing Miami, Ohio, Texas A&M, Bethune-Cookman, Temple, Georgia Tech, North Carolina, Clemson, Virginia, NC State, Florida State, Louisville, and Boston College. This is going to be a very big year for Mario Cristobal. It is year two. There's going to be big expectations for them to be one of the more competitive teams in the ACC with what they're returning, getting and recruiting, and what they got in the transfer portal. But ultimately, you have to really see it all come to fruition. There's definitely going to be some pressure on Mario Cristobal for 2023. Well, guys, if you made this far in today's video, drop something down in the comment section below what videos you want to see on this channel in the future. And before you head out, Remember to smash that like button, turn on those post notifications, and subscribe if you haven't already. B. Kelly out.